Hi everyone and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to my April wrap up part two where we're going to talk about the other um, 27 books that I read <laughs> in the month of April. April was a killer month and there's even a couple days of the month left when I'm recording this but you know sometimes you just have to cut it off and say it's time to film the wrap up because it's otherwise it's ridiculously long. So let's go ahead and talk about my stats for this month. So three DNFs, I had three three stars, two 3.5 stars, 17 four stars, 10 4.5 stars, and 21 five stars. So it was a very very good month for me. This was a total of 20,138 pages and that averages out to about 671 pages per day. So I am going to do this the same way that I did my wrap up part one for April. So if you haven't seen that, um, it'll be like tagged up here or at the end of this video. Not sure where I'm going to put it yet. But what I did is I said all the other books that I read, but I only said about like a sentence about them. And then the books that are five stars are the ones that I'll actually talk more in depth about. If there's any of these books that I mentioned that aren't a five star that you want to know a little bit more about, feel free to either message me down below, check out my Goodreads, which is always in the description. Um, if you want to know more details about a book, um, just because to really give the books that I love the most their attention, I have to skip over the mediocre ones. Like I just, I have to. You can see I give a lot of books five stars because I read a lot of romance. And for me, I don't have a super, it's not that I don't have a high standard, it's just that I'm easily pleased. Like if a romance gives me all the feelings, if I feel like the characters are really fun or interesting or different, like I just have a pretty like loose feel for them. Whereas when it is a story that is not leaning into romance, I have higher expectations for what keeps my interest. That's why I mostly read romance because it makes me the happiest. So there you go. So let's go ahead and go through all of the books that weren't five stars. Although you can tell the bulk of my books were four stars or above. So I pretty much everything I read, I would recommend. So let's talk about the three DNFs very briefly. So first I DNFed Sherwood by Megan Spooner. And this is sad, but this was the pick. This was our buddy read pick. And I was a little delayed in starting it. And then I got three chapters in and I just was not feeling it. I wanted to read other things that I had on my list and so I asked in the discord hey guys who finished this is this worth it for me to push forward and I got a resounding no the highest anybody really rated it was a three star if they finished it at all so I moved along I really liked Megan Spooner's Hunted which was a beauty and the beast retelling that actually had some shades of east of the sun west of the moon in it but again I didn't rate that one super highly either so it's kind of, yeah, I've never really liked Robin Hood retellings, so I moved on. Then, sadly, I did DNF Mansfield Park. This isn't because I don't want to finish this. I was reading this with Murphy, one of my dear friends, and she liked it, but it wasn't her favorite. And it's one of Jane Austen's longest, and just, I, I have to be in a particular mood to read Jane Austen, and I'm just not right now. Although, Murphy's going to be reading Sense and Sensibility soon, and I am going to try that one again. I just, maybe when I'm older, I'll want these more. But I love the film adaptations. I'm just not a huge fan of the books, which is sad, but it's true. Then I also DNF'd Great and Terrible Beauty, which was my pick for a reread this month. I totally still want to reread this. It's on my list of books to reread, but I just wasn't in the mood. And I don't want to be in the wrong mood to reread one of my favorite series so that I make sure I give it the appropriate chance. So those were the three DNFs I had. Then I read One Moment Please, Wait on Me, and Next in Line by Amy Dawes. This is a little fun trilogy about, um, I'm not sure where they're from, but the first one, One Moment Please, is actually the third one that I read, and it is a unexpected baby from a one night stand, and he's actually an ER doctor, and this girl that he has a one night stand with after she comes in. I mean, not directly from there, like he meets her at the hospital and then later on they run into each other and it's kind of this like hate to love, 
and she ends up getting pregnant and then she comes back into the ER because she's been having kind of like um, she has something else wrong with her and they have to do a pregnancy test first and it's positive and so it was crazy but remember I'm not talking too much about these and then there was wait on me which is about this guy that works at a garage and uh, there is this girl who writes smut novels and she always goes to this garage to write because she's kind of like inspired by the area around them and they end up he ends up helping her with ideas for her romance novel then the one that I just finished was um what did I just say the picture's up here and this is about the little sister of Miles who's the guy who works at the garage and <laughs> his best friend Sam who is the nephew of the owner and they meet each other not at the shop and they have this really cute connection over ice fishing. And then they run into each other again and figure out, oh, you're my brother's best friend. But I kind of want to sleep with you. So those were all like four stars for me. Then I took on the Off Balance series by Lucia Franco. So I read the first four books of these. These have a lot of controversy on a booktube. This is about a girl who it's she's 16 when this starts and she falls for her gymnast coach and he is 32 and the series takes place so far it's been almost two years that it's like been happening for um this was one that got removed from pretty much everywhere the only place you can purchase it is from the author's website so i bought the ebooks from her and Let's just say because I'm into the age gap taboo twist that I didn't hate it. It was it was pretty sexy, that's for sure. But it ends up being that thing where like there's four books in the series and there's still one more to come at least. And I have no idea when it's coming out. And I really wish I I thought there was only four in it. I didn't realize there was another one because each one of these books had a horrible cliffhanger. Like the kind of cliffhanger that you're like, fuck you to the author. Pardon me. And which is good, but they were only four stars for me and I'm annoyed that I didn't get to finish it. So I have them. I actually have these ones. So I read the Blindfolded trilogy by Alessandra Torre, which is her first series she did. So it's Blindfolded Innocence, Masked Innocence, and End of the Innocence. And I had actually purchased these books on um, Thrift Book a long time ago because I liked Alessandra Torre's um twisted marriage duet and these are about swingers which is the same thing that twisted like twisted marriage was about and these characters are actually in that series so also I think it was probably more taboo when it first came out this is actually kind of tame now um I gave them all four stars they were fine um, but yeah, Swingers, that was a thing. Once Upon a Winter's Eve by Tessa Dare. This is a novella in the Spindle Cove series. This was super cute. I gave this 4.5 stars. No, I gave it four stars basically because it was so short. This had one of the coolest premises I've ever seen. And I don't want to say too much because it's only a novella. But if you like Tessa Dare, like I'm someone who I never used to really read novellas. And then I realized that I've been reading a lot of them on ebook, so why can't I just like, I've been reading novellas. I just didn't realize that I was because when they're in ebook form, but you don't realize what it is. But this is actually a self-published one, so I had to order it. And this is about Violet, and it's Christmas Eve, and... I don't know what else to say. This man washes up in the cove. And he speaks a language only Violet can interpret. And there's more of a connection between them than you think. I feel like that's all I should say. I wanted this to be a full book. And that's why it's only four stars. Honestly, it should probably be more stars. But I just... This needed to be a full book, Tessa. And I don't know why it's only half. But I'm trying to make myself through the complete Spindle Cove series. Because I've read the last book first on accident. And then I read the first book, so then this is the next book in line, and I'm going to keep going with that soon. soon. Then I read my Her Big Neighbor by Penny Wilder. This is about this girl who comes home to stay with her mom. Her mom's kind of a man-hater. She moves home to stay with her mom, and the neighbor next door is a little bit older than her. 
and he's super sexy and they have a connection right away but her mom doesn't want her hooking up with anybody it was kind of a stupid reason why these people had to keep it a secret I guess is basically the point so I gave this a four star the chemistry was super hot I really like these two but the whole like premise why there was tension for the relationship just I was like meh I'm not into this at all then I read The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. I gave this 4.5 stars. I reserve the right for this to become five star. Also, I feel like I don't really need to talk about this book because there are people who can A, speak about it more eloquently than me, B, love it more than I do, and C, you can want, don't read as many other books in a month as I do. And I don't have time because we got a lot of five stars to talk about. But I listened to this in audio and listening to The Well of Ascension right now. Um, his writing's wonderful. His world's wonderful. The magic system's amazing. I just wasn't super connected to the story, which is why I gave it 4.5 stars because objectively, this is amazing. And if you don't need characters to be, and they're great characters. I just wasn't as connected with them as I want for it to be a five star read. Um, but again, I withhold the right to upgrade this once I finish the series. But for now, 4.5 stars for this lovely. I read the entire Pucked series by Helen Hunting. And I'm going to come back to this because a few of them are five stars, but not all of them are five stars. So the ones that were four stars for me were Pucked Love, Pucked Up, and Pucked Under. And then the other ones were five stars, and I'm going to talk about them when I get to the five stars. But I love this series. They are hockey romances, and whew, we're going to talk about them more in a minute. Ones that weren't five stars, I have the Off Campus series by Al Kennedy. I've already read the first one. I read it last month or the month before, which the first one is The Deal, which everybody's heard about. Um, and then I read The Mistake, The Score, and the goal. And I read these all basically in two days. Not that you're surprised by seeing how many books that I read all the time. And I like them. They continue being at Briar University. They are hockey players. They're one of these. This one is a um, virgin heroine and John Logan. And the girl's name is Grace Ivers. This was cute. Then there's The Score. This one is about um, Dean De Laurentiis, who's a super player, and Allie. And Allie is like good friends with, I think it's with Grace or Hannah or both of them. I don't know. She's friends with one of them, one of the other girls. And she just gets out of a very serious relationship and he's still trying to win her back but they've been going like off and on and off and on and she knows that in the long run he's not right for her and she ends up having a one night stand with Dean and then Dean can't get enough of her and still wants her and this one was pretty good I ended up they kind of diminished in stars for me so like this one was a 4.5 star this one was a 4 star and the score sadly ended up only being a 3.5 star for me which I was sad because I really was excited for John Tucker, but he just, so this was, this was a surprise baby story and I just didn't like how it all went. Like I actually am someone who likes surprise baby stories, but I have like specific qualities that I want in the trope if there is the trope and this one just didn't tick my boxes for me unfortunately but L. Kennedy is great I'm planning to continue on to the what's it called the Briar U series which came after this eventually okay all right so now let's get into the five stars okay let's do that so all right, so one that I just read the other day I read your dad will do by Katie Roberts so this is a cute little thing. I talked about this in my um, vlog the other day. Katie Roberts, there was this tweet that she put out and she's starting this little like taboo romance series and she, it's called like a touch of taboo. And one of the prompts someone gave was like an ex's dad. So she finds her fiance cheating on her and then she wants to get revenge on him. And so she's always been really attracted to his father. So this was going to be her father-in-law and she goes to seduce him to get revenge. But he's more than willing to help her with this because he thinks his son was a dick, but he wants more than just 
revenge sex from her and he's actually pretty interested in her and it was great so this was nice because it's a touch of taboo because it's a pretty big age gap as well as um it has a little bit of like daddy kink without it being like a stepfather or a relative or anything like that you know there's no relation to this it's just more of like I want to call this guy daddy and and it was super sexy as Katie Robert is want to do so I had to give that puppy five stars okay okay and then I'm just gonna go ahead and talk about the other Katie Roberts book that I read that I'm sure you just heard me you've heard me like whine on and on about where is it on my list here it is and that's The Beast by Katie Robert um I adore this series this is the fourth in the wicked villain series and honestly if you love dark romance if you love fairy tale retellings and you haven't started this series i don't know what you're doing like i don't know what you're doing with yourself um this is the fourth one this is a menage including beast gaston and bell and it's taking place in the wicked villains world and bell needs gaston and beast to come back because they were commanders in her father's army and they were both dating her at the same time, but like not in a menage situation. And they were waiting for her to choose one of them. And one of them broke up with her and one of them proposed to her and she didn't end up with either of them. And this time around, they make a deal with her. It's Beast's idea actually, that they get to spend two weeks with her um, being her doms basically. This, this, this series is pretty big on the um, BDSM parts of things. And then at the end of that time, she will pick one of them, but they will both come back to work, basically. So they all agree that they will live by the repercussions of this. But Beast actually decides that he wants both of them, and he's going to figure out how to make it happen. And whoo, whoo, I just, I love it so much. So you really got to get on this train guys if you like dark romances you should be reading these books in my opinion the series has only gotten better i've loved all of them they've all been five stars but when i look at them they literally kind of go in order for me of which ones are my favorite um and the next two i think there's finally going to be like some female female relationships happening if not another like menage with two females and a male maybe I can't promise that because she hasn't put out any more of a premise yet but I want it so much Ooh, boy okay so I also did a reread of A Court of Mist and Fury not going to talk about that too much I'm going to be doing a deep dive for this like I did for Akatar. Um, it was still five stars it was such a fun reread I picked up so much more this time put so many notes in I had so many um new things that I noticed and I just really loved doing this reread and I'm actually in the middle of the third one right now and it's so great so good okay so then I also read everything we left unsaid which I also did a lot of talk about this is the sequel to um, something that could last by Ashley Cade um, this is a self-published novel um, I can't really say too much about this the first novel is kind of a summer fling kind of book and then there this book is about what happens after that and that's all that I can really say about that but I really enjoyed being with the characters again. I love the hero in this series. I love the heroine too but I love Jacob. I just feel for him because so he's from a rich family but he's just a good person. And not that being rich makes you a bad person. I just mean he's the son of a senator. He's been very privileged. And our heroine isn't that at all. Like she lives with her grandmother. She's had a tough life. She's had to work her way through college. She's had to work for everything. And Jacob's kind of had everything given to him. But he is such a good guy. And I love that it isn't like him being this like hardened, spoiled brat. And then this like poor sweet heroine like shows him the error of his ways no he's a great person and like he just is he's a wonderful person and I love reading about him and be warned there is to be a third book in this series and it just there's cliffhangers okay there's cliffhangers in both of the books so just be prepared okay be prepared about 
pucked, okay? So I told you which ones got four stars or 4.5 stars. The ones that got five stars in the series are pucked, forever pucked, pucked over, and pucked off and pucks and penalties, which was a novella series. So that's a lot. I'm mostly going to tell you about the first one, which I know not a ton of, like, not everyone loves as much as me. So Pucked is a hockey romance, obviously. And this first one is about a girl named Violet, who is the stepsister to a player. And for a hot minute here, because I didn't read the back of this or whatever, it's an ebook, I thought that this was maybe going to be a stepbrother romance because I just did just in the immediate setup very quickly I realized it wasn't I was like oh <laughs> didn't know we were going here and I don't have a problem with those books obviously have you heard about the other books I read <laughs> have you okay but this is actually about Alex Waters who's the captain of this team and he and Violet run into each other at the bar after the game that she went to for her stepbrother and they have an instant connection and he's big and muscly and hot and really sensitive at the same time but he has a bad reputation because he has purposely let it be perpetuated that he's a player because it's good for his image it gets him sponsorships the ladies really like him it happens and him and violet have this instant connection and they end up having a one night stand which is guys one of the hottest one night stands I've ever read because Alex is the king, the king of consent. I have never, never seen consent written the way that it is. This man asked for permission at every single step of the way and did it in such a sexy way. And then even the next time that they're going to hook up, they're hanging out and he's like, whoa, I don't have any expectations. He's like, I really think you're beautiful. Obviously, we have really good sex together. But just because you gave me permission before doesn't give me permission for everything afterwards. And I was like, boom, ovaries exploding. Just all my future, all my future babies right there. Because, holy crap, that is, I mean, it's the truth. That's something that should just be innately true, but it isn't always, is it? It isn't always innately true that that's brought up. You know, like even in romance novels that have good consent, do they always ask every time? And this man does. There is like, in the entire series, because we see these this couple, I saw a lot of Alex and Violet, He's always asking permission every time, even when they've been together for a very long time. He's always making sure that she's as interested in it as he is. And for those reasons, I forgave like a lot, not a ton, like this was a fun story to me. I like the kind of character that Alex is. He's almost that like if he wasn't so lovable and like because he, he, he always asks permission in the bedroom, but he's a little bit <laughs> insistent outside of it. So he he really likes Violet and he pursues her very hard and in cute ways like never in a possessive way but trying to get her to agree to go on a date with him he's very insistent he sends flowers to her he shows up at her work she never tells him no so she's never like stop doing this and it becomes clear that she really likes how he's pursuing her this way but I know that that's an issue for some people who read it. I just, the man that Alex Waters is, and also these are younger too, like he's only 23. She's only, she's about the same. Actually, I think he's like 25. Um, there's some other characters who are younger. And so I give him a lot of leeway because I freaking, I loved it. I loved seeing that kind of consent. And I'm gonna like, I, actually, I'm gonna make a video about sexy heroes who use consent in like a in a sexy way because I think that is a good thing and I feel proud to have those be the first kind of romances that like maybe new adults are reading is when you see consent done that way because who oh my that makes a mama feel good it makes me feel good so then put forever pucked which is actually the fourth one in the series but it's the direct sequel to um Alex and Violet 
And so I read that one next because I just couldn't wait to see what was happening with them. And that's about uh, something bad happens to Alex and it's them dealing with it and how they're going to, how their future is gonna be going forward. So read the Puffed series if you like um, super sexy characters and just, oh my God, it's so steamy. Like I can't, I can't, I can't. I read that entire series in like three days and it was out of this effing world. It was so great. Okay, so now going from some of the best consent I've ever read to a book that's really hard to explain and talk about. And now I talked about this pretty extensively in the vlog when I read it. It's the vlog from two weeks ago, I think. And that's Docile by K.M. Sparza. So I really struggled with if I was giving this book five stars or not. And I ended up giving it five stars because I just thought it was fascinating. And this book is about the near future where to pay off your debt, you can sell yourself into slavery. And when you enter the slavery, sometimes it is for manual labor. Sometimes it is for like being a housekeeper or a house slave, but generally it's to be a sexual one. And so when you enter this, you still have a certain number of rights, like you still have voting rights, you still have the right to be taken care of, like they can't abuse you. Um, you still have the right to um, your sexual health. You cannot say no to the sex, but you have rights to um, like your sexual health. They can't put you in danger that way. And then you have the right to take something called docilin, which basically makes you a mindless puppet for the time for which you are a slave. So you don't have to remember it or do anything other than what you're told. So we meet our character, Elisha, who his mother had already done a term as a docile. And she didn't come out of docile in the way you're supposed to. Because at the end of taking it, you're supposed to go back to normal. And she stayed in kind of this slave-like state. And so he agrees to go into... Um, slavery to pay off his family's debt but he refuses docile because he wants to be aware of what's happening to him he ends up getting his debt purchased by a man named alex whose family invented docile and is working on a new formula and alex purchases a docile because he wants to try out this new formula and see if it's more humane for um for the docile's or not and unfortunately for him, he buys Elisha, who won't take docilin. So now Alex has to train Elisha without the help of this drug. And so he's basically training this person to be his pleasure doll. And not just in the sexual sense, but that is a big part of this book. This book was fascinating. I can't tell you where it was going because that is a huge like part of the story is like this isn't just I don't want to say torture porn but this isn't like master slave porn this isn't like there's a purpose to the story like we we see Elisha being trained this way and we see Alex falling in love with Elisha but can you love someone without your free will that's why like master slave romances are so taboo because there's a power dynamic that can't be overcome and the deeper and deeper Alex falls in with Elisha and the more Elisha feels love for Alex one of them is becoming okay with his situation and the other one is becoming horrified at who he is and what their society is. And so it was fascinating. This is actually, a, this was in the science fiction section, the science fiction section of Barnes and Noble. Um, and there are content warnings for rape and sexual abuse and physical abuse and punishments and not in the sexy BDSM way, but in the you did something bad, I'm punishing you. Um, and it was hard, like I cried a lot, but I had compassion for Alex and I had love for Elisha and I wanted both of them to be okay and 
crazy. So this was five stars. This was bonkers. And I really like what someone on the back said. Sam J. Miller said, this is disturbing, sexy, disturbingly sexy book. And it will infect your brain. And I, I like that because there are parts of it that are sexy. And then you are horrified that you're finding it sexy. And not in the like, because this isn't written to be this fun taboo romance where you're supposed to. Because I mean, I just said, I just talked about a bunch of books I've read that are taboo and sexy and it's fun. And this one's written to kind of make you think about that. And so it was heavy. And yeah. Yeah. But I just, I had to give it five stars because I'm still thinking about it. Whereas uh, some of these books, even that I gave five stars, like I can't remember the names of the people. I just know that it was fun. And this was one of those that like, it, re it reminded me a lot of like, it doesn't, but like My Dark Vanessa how like made me think about these things where like I love age gap romances. But in real life, that wouldn't be good. I may like reading a slave master romance, but do I want that to happen to someone in real life? No. So definitely check that book out. That's a new release that came out this month. So check that one out. I read Hurt, Hurt via Michaels. This book was very intense. Um, this book is about a man who used to work for kind of like a mob boss in Scotland and then something went down and so we're seeing two timelines we're seeing his life what was happening to him then and then we see him now and he lives in the United States and he's working at a hotel bar and he has kind of this flirtation going on with the desk clerk who works um, late and they have this friendship going on and then one night um, so she's been like working her way up to asking him out kind of um, because she can tell he's too shy to ask her out and she gets horribly assaulted in the bathroom um, after he has left for the night and he forgot his keys and came back and he finds her and now we're at this place where these two people had the opportunity to be lovers and now can they ever have that? because she feels devastated and ruined and like she can't be touched after what's happened to her and he f oh it was so good and the horrors of his past like he's been horribly abused and mistreated when he was younger and everything that happened to him in Scotland is a nightmare and so they're both dealing with some horrific things and so this was really heavy but Lydia Michaels she takes a heavy story and just there's I cried but yet I loved and it was so good so I picked this book up because I really liked Breaking Perfect by Lydia Michaels which was a really heavy um this girl who had OCD um I just I loved that book so much and that one was an erotic novel this one is considered a romantic suspense it's not actually super heavy in um uh, it's not actually super heavy in um, like erotica, but there is two graphic graphic rape scenes, one of a male and one of a female. And it was hard, but it was it was a very good book. And oh, yeah, I read some intense books at the midway point of the month here. Okay, now we're good. Now we can talk about historical romances. We because I read three more this month and they were all five stars. So first one was The Viscount and the Vixen by Lorraine Heath. This was finishing off the Hellions and Havisham series. Oh my gosh, guys. Mm. So this one is about the son of the mad um, Mar Marquis, Marquess, Mar Marcus, whatever. I never say it right. And he is an old man who he's been crazy this whole series because he lost his wife when his son was born and he's just been like kind of cuckoo since then and he decides that he needs an heir because his son hasn't gotten married and had a baby so this is all a ruse he puts out an advertisement looking for a wife who will marry himself but really it's a trick and he knows that um whoever this woman is that shows up to marry him his son will step in and marry the girl because he doesn't want his father to be taken advantage of but really his father set the whole thing up. 
And so we have this girl named Portia and she's in some trouble. She was abandoned by her, she was a, this man's mistress and she's been abandoned by him and she's pregnant. And so her plan was to marry this old Earl and, you know, foist this child off to him and he was looking for an heir anyway. But now she's married to the son who is dangerous and beautiful and young and virile and she's falling in love with him and she's about to have a baby that's not his and holy crap this story was heavy like every book in this series but Lorraine Heath just likes to ring it out of me and I'll tell you there's a wrap up to the crazy Marcus's story in here that I was sobbing like I'm gonna cry thinking about it because I can't tell you what happened but I'm gonna cry and this trilogy was so rewarding for these three men and the fa and like the father, the man who took them all in, because that's the thing. This is the actual son of the of the Marcus, but the other two were boys who were taken in by him. And even though for all these years he's been missing his wife and just been wanting to be with her again, he loved those boys. He didn't just take them in and like pay for their education or whatever. He loved them and he was a parent to them. He was crazy, <laughs> but he gave everything that he could to loving these boys, um, even though he just wanted to die, basically. And I loved it. I loved it so much. So please give this trilogy a try. It's excellent. Then I finally read First Come Scandal. Not finally. This only came out last week. This is the final book in the Rokesby series, which is also the Bridgerton prequel series. This is about Georgiana Bridgerton and Nicholas Rokesby. Georgiana was kidnapped by her suitor because he wanted to make her marry him because he's a gambling addict and he lost his fortune. And the Bridgertons have a lot of money. And she manages to escape, but now she's ruined. Nicholas is the youngest brother of, or the youngest son of the Rokesby family. And him and Georgiana are exactly the same age. He has been going to school to be a doctor. And then he receives a letter from his father that all that it says is, please return to Craig with all possible haste. It is critical that your mother and I speak with you as soon as possible. My regrets for interrupting your studies. And that's all that the note says. And he gets home and finds out that his dad, who is Georgiana's stepfather, really needs him to marry Georgie so that she's not ruined because of what this asshole did to her. And he's very resistant to this. He has a plan. He has things happening. He doesn't have room to marry this woman. And he's just a good dude, though. And also, Georgie and him discover that they do have an attraction for each other. So why not? This solves everyone's problems. And it won't be the worst thing to happen to them. So it was adorable. It was gorgeous. It was nice. All right. The piece de resistance. Again, the magic. Which again, at the end of a vlog that I read last week, I talked about this book for 15 minutes. So I'll try not to do that this time. This is a prequel to the Wallflower series. It's actually considered like the 0.5. And this is the story of both of um, Westcliff's younger sisters. So it tells you that it's just about Lady Aline, but it's really about Aline and Olivia. They pretty much have equal page time in this. Um, there's a cute, my sister said that the dress looked like curtains, which it definitely does. And the, one of these sisters, she was in love with a stable boy when she was 17 and her father found out and banished and like threatened her that he would have Matthew put in prison if she didn't break it off and make sure that he left. And so she tells him that she could have never been with a stable boy and he believes her because it's his biggest fear and he runs away. And then actually a couple months later, Aline gets in a horrible accident, which leaves scars that are not visible on the, like, in the parts of her that you can see. Like, it's, be it's below her waist that she has some issues. Then, 10 years later, or 12 years later... That man comes back. He's made a fortune for himself in America and he brings with him a colleague of his and they're trying to make some investments in the in London and 
he's come back for revenge against Aline and Aline knows that he is like she can she knows why he's here and she hasn't stopped loving him she hasn't wanted anything else but to be with him and so she's gonna let him take whatever revenge that he wants because she knows that he's her only like he's the it's the only happiness she'll ever have woman's a little bit delusional but it's okay that's what a romance is for and then we have Olivia who starts to fall for Matthew's colleague who he brings with who's kind of a drunk not kind of a drunk he's a drunk and he's slowly killing himself with alcohol and he's only like 35 um this story is so good you really should go check out my rant if you want to know more but it's these two different love stories both of them unlikely Westcliff isn't happy about either of them he's trying to get his nose into stuff and this actually only takes place like two years before the Wallflower series starts um so you'll definitely if you've read the Wallflower series and you haven't read this first which is what I did because I didn't know this was part of the series until I finished the Wallflower series but damn it was good and it was also more fun to read retroactively because Westcliff is still kind of his like stuffy stuffed shirt self that he is in the Wallflower series um and we get to see that he was maybe having his heart softened a little bit already before then so it was great so oh my gosh there we go those are all the books I've read in April make sure you check out part one if you want to know about the other 25 books I already read this month but this was a really fun month. Um, May is starting off with the Light versus Dark Romance Readathon, so make sure you check out my video about that if you want to join us. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. I put out new videos three to four times a week, and you can watch some more of those videos right now. Bye bye.